Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing tonight? Just got out of the shower a little bit ago. It's very apropos that I have on this lavender lilac shirt because I um, used all of my sleepy products. I, uh, well, I used the uh, Fairly Traded Honey Shampoo and then I used the Veganese Conditioner and then I, the Coast Bar Soap and then I used, um, uh, and then I used, Roll, roll, please. Um, the sleepy shower gel, which is weird. It's like the consistency is almost like lotion. It's kind of crazy. And so I used that, and then um, I did the Avena lotion on my face, like I always do. But then I used the sleepy lotion on my body. So yeah. And that's about it. I had a hard time pulling it together today. It seemed like. Do you ever just have those days that just feel off? Like, I woke up today and I just felt off, like, all day. Like, went and got coffee, picked up PP's meds, um, and I just fell off. Like, I just didn't, I was like, mm, I just felt blah all day. And then I came home and I filmed some videos. Somebody made a reference about this Tupelo honey, and they said that was a song. I didn't know that that was a song. But anyway, the Tupelo honey from Delia, it, that she got me from chubbychap.com. Um, I don't know, it was, I just fell off, and then like, not really, I wouldn't say sad or down, I just felt blah today. And, um, but like really lacking motivation to do anything, you know? Which is kind of weird for me because once I get up, I'm just kind of like driven and I just go, 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 you know? And um, and then I filmed some videos and then Alex came home and then once Alex came home, of course, as soon as I get in my car, somebody's texting me, it's Alex. Um, as soon as Alex came home, I like felt like 100% better. I don't know what it was about. It was so weird. And I was like real chatty and we were talking about our day and he made a huge salad and um, I'm back on the Optavia. I've been doing that today. So day one stuck to it. And um, I'm hoping to like keep up with it all through until we leave on vacation. And then um, I mean, I'm not, there's no way I can stick to it on vacation in Las Vegas. Alex, actually, Alex was just showing me this restaurant tonight that he wants to try that's in the Palms restaurant. It's like an arcade or something. It's real cool. It's different, new. So, um, he was seeing a video for it online. And then, um, I'm going to go get a Diet Coke in a second, but I'm drinking water right now. And then he started watching Big Little Lies. And I was finishing getting up my videos, so um, I was just kind of hanging out. And then I was like, I don't want to watch this because I'm going to watch the season. He finished the season. I, he literally started it like yesterday or the day before and finished it already. He can go through a season so quick. He said it was really, really good. Um, so, but he just sits there and power watches shows. He'll like watch like four or five shows in a row. So he's going to bed right now. And, um,. Just gave him a kiss good night and he was giving PP his meds and yeah that was about it that was today it wasn't super exciting I was going through the cabinet I have all these DVDs I have like DVDs I order on Amazon and then I have some DVDs that people send me and I was like I would really love to just like sit and watch some of these DVDs this weekend would you want to do that and he was like yeah sure he was like what are they and I was like I ordered sorry wrong number with Barbara St Stanwyck which I'll tell a little story about that in a second because I was like what can I talk about tonight and I was like oh I, I haven't talked about that in a while so in a while I'll tell that story again but um yeah, recently I was sent Best Little Whorehouse in Texas and there's another movie I've been sent a couple movies um recently so and I've been wanting to show this stuff from my P.O. box but I don't start my vlog until late and I don't you know like Alex is asleep now so I don't want to vlog from the kitchen but um I'm gonna 
pull in here so I can read his text. I literally just put contact solution in my eyes because my eyes were a little dry and they're like, I, for a long time, I was sleeping with my contacts in it, like, every day. Like, I literally did it for, like, two weeks. And I used to, and I used to be so weird about sleeping with my contacts. I would never do it. Even if even if I was only going to take them out for an hour and go to sleep and get back up. Um, but I, there's been periods where I've been sleeping for long, or going to sleep. Is it, like, out of focus with my contacts in? And, uh... Oh, he's texting me this restaurant in San Diego that he wants to try. Seria San Diego. Let's see what the menu looks like. There's literally like, it's sashimi, big fish. There's literally like four things on here from that's not seafood. And it's roasted Mary's chicken, half roasted Mary's chicken, eight ounce filet, grilled lamb chops, charcoal grilled Angus. There's literally nothing for me to get on this restaurant. Is he joking? They have four salads. The Greek salad, chickpea and spinach, beaten. I, this will not be a restaurant I'll be going to. He's like, uh, he's like, we should try this restaurant when we're out in San Diego. Hashtag date night. <laughs> Hashtag date night. Um, he doesn't eat seafood either. Like, he's not a vegetarian, but he doesn't like seafood. I'm like, did you look at the menu? Alex does like a good filet, though. Sushi Boss place is supposed to be really good. I haven't been there. I was like, I have this stuff in a, in my hair called Mr. Dandy's Hair Candy. Lush discontinued it, but I still have some of it left. I'm sure it's outdated, but I don't really care. Elf sent it to me from the UK store, and I love it, and it smells so good. And I let it sit in my hair, and then it's like, you can kind of like do whatever you want to do with it later, and it kind of like goes back to normal. But anyway, I think it smells so fantastic. And I was like, Alex, don't you think this smells so good? And he was like, no, I don't really like the smell of that. And I'm right in front of Ruth's Cafe. <laughs> he said they have a vegetarian paella. I didn't see that. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Let me tell you how excited that sounds. <laughs> It's like when you go to restaurants, you know, and people are always like, they try to be so nice about it. They're like, oh, we're gonna go to this steakhouse. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I mean, like, I can do like a wet salad and just like hold the bacon, or, you know, I can do a uh, baked potato, you know, like I'm not, a, I'm not vegan. So I can do like a baked potato with sour cream and like butter and stuff like that and just not get bacon bits on it and whatever. You know, I can still eat when I go to like steakhouses and stuff, but it's crazy to me because people will be like, they have a really good vegetarian dish. And I'm like, oh, really? And they're like, yeah, it's like, uh, okra, broccoli, and asparagus, and then they stir fry it. I'm like, oh, okay. That sounds absolutely disgusting, but thank you. Oh my God, really? What are you having? Oh, I'm having a, a 20 ounce filet with a baked potato and a, oh, you are, yes. <laughs> We go to this steakhouse right up here sometimes called Harry and Izzy's. It's actually like, it's kind of like, it's upscale, but not as upscale as like a steakhouse, steakhouse, but it's still really a nice steakhouse. We went there for Alex's friend's, 
friend's husband's birthday not too long ago. And then I had my birthday there. I think it was last year that we went with Tanya and her husband and Alex went and uh, my sponsor went to Harry and Izzy's. But I will tell you that they have the most incredible macaroni and cheese in the entire world. So like I go there and I get like a wedge salad with a baked potato, uh, with macaroni and cheese I mean. When we go to Ocean Prime, which is Alex's favorite, well, he likes Fleming's and he likes Ocean Prime, which are two steakhouses that are like kind of across the street from each other. Um, he, like, he gets it all, but like, I usually get, well, I get the same thing every time I go to a steakhouse. I get like a wedge salad and a baked potato. And you know what's really funny is, it's always too much. Like, I don't need that much food to eat. Like, it sounds like it wouldn't really be that much food, but it's actually a lot of food. I mean, if you, like a wedge salad is pretty much a large salad. It's like when you ask people, like your waiter or waitress, and you're like, well, is it a really big wedge? And they're like, I mean, it's a wedge. <laughs> right, but is it like a huge wedge or is it a regular wedge? Oh, it's just a wedge. <laughs> I love a wedge. Okay, if you guys like wedge shame, okay, I didn't, I used to not eat wedge salads. And one of our friends, we went to this restaurant up here one night called District Tap, and she got a wedge salad. And I, after that, like with the little, I love the little tomatoes on it that are like cut in halves and stuff. Ever since that night, I've been obsessed with a wedge salad. I honest to God, in my entire life, this was probably, mm, I don't know, four or five years ago. I don't think in my entire life I had ever had a wedge salad before. And then after that, I became, I became immediately obsessed with wedge salads. But when you guys get a wedge salad, do you eat it? You know, okay, so if you don't know what a wedge salad is, it's like a big wedge of lettuce. <laughs> they pour the dressing over it and they put bacon bits. It's usually blue tree cheese dressing, I think. And then like bacon bits, but I don't get the bacon bits on it. And like, then they have little halves of the, like those little cherry tomatoes. Do you got, and sometimes they have like little onions on them. Sometimes they don't, they put other things on them sometimes, but it's a real basic salad. Do you guys just like cut the wedge as you go? Or do you take a, a fork and knife and actually cut the whole wedge apart like, and make it into a salad? That's what I do. And people look at me like I'm crazy when I'm doing it. I'm like, it's like this huge piece of lettuce. I just cut it all up and make it like this salad. It's so, now I'm hungry for a wedge. <laughs> now I'm so hungry for a wedge. I am so excited to go to Las Vegas, lay out by the pool, get Diet Cokes all day, order food. I think that we're gonna do some day beds at the pool. Cause the thing with the day bed is that they're expensive, but at the same time, like, so we get there on a Wednesday. Like a Wednesday and Thursday shouldn't be too expensive at a day bed, especially like at the Cosmo. Um, it, I mean, like if it's like $150, $300, which that's cheap for a day bed in Las Vegas, but you get all your food and drinks like added into that. We'll just have to see how expensive they are. We'll probably do a day bed at least one day by the pool. I love going to the pool in Las Vegas. It's like such dry, hot heat. really excited about it and then we have things to do literally every night in Las Vegas the night that we get there we have a show I don't know which night our shows are but we have a show every single night that we get well not every single night we have a show I think the only night that we don't have a show is Sunday and then we have two DJs. We're going to go see Rufus DeSoul and Cascade. I don't know if I'm going to go to Cascade. I may not. Um, but I'll probably definitely go to Rufus DeSoul. And um, Maya, Alex's cousin, has some way to like get us in VIP or something. She said, well, last year she said that too, and they had to wait four hours in line. I, I went and um, gambled that night. That was fun. I'm ready to go. And it's kind of exciting because we get back and when we get back, we um, like only have like a month until we go to San Diego. So it's like another fun trip to plan for. And then I'm wanting to plan a long weekend to go visit Mel. She knows that. And um, so I'm, I, and I don't know, Alex may not even want to do that. Um, so if we get back in September, that'd be like the first of October. We might do that like the first week of November or something. I have to look and see what Halloween is because I want to be here for Halloween. I don't know why it matters if I'm here for Halloween. Uh, I don't go to like the big Halloween parties on the weekends anymore and Caroline doesn't have her Halloween party anymore. And I 
don't even know what I did on Halloween last year. For a couple of years, Melissa and um, Jason, Alex, and I would go and see a movie on Halloween. Um, one year we went and saw The Exorcist. One year, I think maybe one year Melissa and I just went the two of us. And we went and saw Halloween. That was the last time that we did it. And um, that was fun. Did they go with us? They didn't go with us that time. But the, the movie theater by our house, the Keystone Arts Theater, like they usually play some kind of retrospective. You know, retrospective is like an older movie. <laughs> retrospective on like um, Halloween. Like they'll play... Halloween or The Exorcist. We no 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 no. Well, Melissa and I did go see the the. We did go see Halloween on Halloween night. I think maybe I don't know. Sometime around there, but we also took Alex and Jason to go see the original Halloween in at IMAX Theater in Noblesville, and um, they weren't impressed. They weren't scared at all. They also both fell asleep during The Exorcist. But I have to say, I don't think The Exorcist is one of the scariest movies ever. I don't love it. This is the world's longest light. Thank you. I can smell that sleepy lotion. It smells so good. It's like lavender and patchouli or something. It smells so good. So we got some fun stuff planned. And then we already have Miami planned and booked. I'm really excited about that. And that's in March. God, in all honesty, I'd like to plan like two more trips in between there. I don't even care. I'd like to go away for just like a long weekend, you know? Just to get away. It's so nice. I'm really excited about Las Vegas. I feel like... Well, when was the last time that we went on a trip? I don't think we've gone somewhere since we went to Florida and Mexico. Which, I mean, that was a fantastic trip. So, I mean, we were, that was too, it was almost too long. I was talking, who were we talking? We were talking to Melissa and Jason about that. It's just like, that was like 11. I mean, it was a great vacation, but like I missed my dogs, you know? So, if that was March, April, really, we haven't gone anywhere since April, May, June, July. Well, I guess it's not that long. Four or five months. August would be like five months total. But we haven't really gone somewhere. It's not really that long. It feels like it's been forever. My dad, back in the day, like, they would, like be here a month and then they would go somewhere for like a, like seven to ten days and then like this was back in the day when I was like in high school and college and stuff like that and they like traveled a lot you know but my dad would work 60 hour weeks or something you know and so like if for my dad it was really really hard for him to even enjoy any time off unless he was gone. I, I really can't remember a time that my dad was not on call. Like, um, I mean, it's kind of a different world growing up that way. Like, I think, like, unless you grew up that way as part of, like, a doctor's family, you don't really understand it. And I don't know if maybe it's a different, kind, you know, my dad, because my dad's area of specialty, um, you know, he's a plastic surgeon, but he did a lot of emergency medicine, too, because he would, like, he was a hand reconstructionist, so he would fix people's hands. And so he would do a lot of, like, hand injuries that happen in, like, bar fights and stuff like that. And so he would get called out. Like, I mean, they took call for the emergency room, he and his partners. And so, like, when I was growing up, I mean, if my dad, if it was his weekend to take call, I just remember my dad always being on call. I just don't ever remember my dad, like, unless we were out of town for the weekend, being off call. Like, he was always on call. I remember that pager going off, like, all the time. I mean, I can remember us, like, going in and sitting down somewhere at a restaurant, you know? And, like, literally, like, five minutes later, my dad, like, being, like... I mean, like, a nice restaurant. And we would order our food, and then my dad would get paged, and he would come back, and he would be like, okay, we have to go. And, like, like he and my stepmom and I would, like, we'd all leave, you know? Um, that was, like, when they first started dating. Like, if we had all gone somewhere together. Or later, like, my stepmom and I would stay. I mean, it was kind of... I felt kind of bad for my dad, you know? But, um... 
but when I was real young, you know, like once my parents had gotten separated and I was with my dad, like when we were at a movie, we left. If we were, you know, doing something, we left. I mean, we always went. I can remember I would, you know, go with my dad. And I kind of like, you know, like when you're growing up and you think like everybody's parents are like your parents. I kind of thought that. Like I kind of thought that, you know, like everybody's parents are on call like my dad. Um, I just always thought people, you know, like I just, I just remember him always being on call, you know. So, one of the movies that I order on Amazon, I don't even know what made me order it one day. I was just, like, thinking about it, and I think I had talked about it in a vlog or something with Sorry Wrong Number with Barbara Stanwyck. I actually have... I need to buy her other books before you can completely not get them anymore. The book was written by Lucille Fletcher, um, and I have a book called $80 to Stanford. And I, it's like this vintage pulp novel, okay, that, like, actually, when you open it, it has, like, the Los Angeles library inside of it, like, I ordered it on eBay or somewhere, and it has, like, the Los Angeles library, like, stamp on it, and you can tell that the stamp is, like, super old, you guys, from, like, the 50s or something, and the book was written in the 30s or the 40s, and that book, $80 to Stanford, is about this guy who's a cab driver, and hit this woman, this mysterious woman, has him take him to this house, like, out in the middle of nowhere, like, in Stanford, Connecticut. And, um, I, I've, I've started this book so many times and never finished it. It's really short. It's, like, an hour and 20, or it's, like, 120 pages. Um, but she also wrote Sorry, Wrong Number, and Sorry, Wrong Number, they made it into a movie with Barbara Stanwyck, and, oh, my God, my mother and I, we used to love this movie, and we would just watch it, and we would get in our pajamas, and we would watch it, and, um... And Barbara Stanwyck in the movie is an invalid, and she's like this heiress to this pharmacist. Like, I think her dad's like, I can't, the cold drop queen, they call her or something. She's like, her dad like owns some like pharmaceutical company or something like that. But anyway, she's real rich. And then she marries this guy that like worked for her dad and he's not real rich. And, um, but anyway, she's like trying to put the, so she overhears these people on the phone. Like she's trying to make a call and she overhears these people plotting to kill somebody, right? Which like, you know, right away, look at my hair. Now it's kind of looking stupid, which you know, right away while you're listening to it, it is her. I'm not going to try to ruin it for you, but you know it right away. Like when you're going to the movie, like they're, they're plotting to kill her. And so, um, but it's real scary and like, but at the same time, it's kind of like real cozy, you know, like <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like it is, but we used to watch that and, we, and, um, we would watch Rear Window. I love Rear Window so much. And then um, we would watch. I actually saw this on Instagram. Somebody posted on Instagram. I don't, they were watching Rear Window outside. And it wasn't like at a drive-in. It was at like this arts festival thing where the screen was outside. And I thought that would be so cool to see Rear Window on like a huge outdoor screen like that. And we would watch. Um, we watched all of the Alfred Hitchcock movies back in the day. Um... We would watch Rope, which was not one of my favorites. The Man Who Knew Too Much, which I absolutely love with Doris Day. Um, we would watch... Um, shoot. Why can't I think of the other ones? Rear Window. Uh, Suspicion. Um, okay, it was at the end, and then I was trying to... It, then it went in and out of focus, and then it took a picture of me instead of record. I, I don't know what I did, but I took a picture of myself. I'm like, <laughs> so anyway, um, but these movies that I loved, I'm not going to go through all the Alfred Hitchcock movies. In fact, I can't even remember half of them right now. I don't know why. But I, what, one of the things that's interesting is that I did not love The Trouble with Harry when I was younger. Oh, birds, birds of the birds. Of course, I loved the birds. Um, I loved Vertigo. I loved... Uh, Psycho. I loved those movies. And they were so scary to me when I was growing up, right? But one that I did not love when I was a kid was The Trouble with Harry. And that is one that I've actually started to really like a lot more as I've gotten older. It's really beautifully shot. It takes place in the fall. Um, I think it has Shirley MacLaine in it. Um, there's so many Alfred Hitchcock movies. And there's actually quite a few that I've never seen. Oh, my God. Thunderstorm. It just, like, th it just like lightning all over the place. Um, but... 
I didn't know that we were supposed to have a thunderstorm tonight or I would have brought the patio cushions in. It rained earlier today and I just like, I missed it by like five minutes and I was like, damn it. So I was hoping that they would dry overnight. Um, but I used to love so many old movies and these movies aren't super, su well now they're considered super old. Um, oh, what I was gonna say was I have a friend of mine that gave me the entire collection of the Alfred Hitchcock movies. I literally, you guys have every Alfred Hitchcock movie, okay? I don't know what is going on with my camera tonight, but it is like going in and out with the, the, the light. It's driving me crazy. So anyway, um, but I have them all on DVDs and there's like a lot of them that I haven't watched. Alex and I started watching them a couple years ago and then we just kind of stopped watching them, but he loved Rear Window um, and he loved The Man Who Knew Too Much. What's and some of my other favorites? I love The Birds. Marnie, not so much one of my favorites. Um, but, you know, I would watch, we watched the other ones. Like, we watched a lot of Cary Grant movies back then. Catch a Thief and Charade. Loved those. Loved Audrey Hepburn. I mean, of course, you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which wasn't, you know, a mystery. But loved Breakfast at Tiffany's. Loved Wait Until Dark, which was one of her later movies where she plays a blind woman and she's in the basement apartment and people are trying to get her. Um, but, you know, there were some movies that I really, really loved. And I was thinking about these the other day. I don't know. I thought about them. I don't think I mentioned them on the vlog, but I would think I was thinking about them as soon as I got off the vlog because it's something to do with the, the the true crime book that I was listening to. And that was um, the Agatha Christie movies that came out. And there were two of them back in the day. And you know, it's interesting to me because they just came out with, um, what do you call it? Uh, shoot. Um, uh, the Orient Ex Murder on the Orient Express, which I thought was really, really well done. I thought the new version of it is, this camera has been giving me nothing but hell the last couple days. Um, I thought it was really, really well done. I was super impressed with it. And, um, but I, I had seen the original version too. I think it was with the Vanessa Redgrave. Maybe the, the new one was too, I don't remember. But I love the original and I love the new one. But I love the old school Agatha Christie movies. I was obsessed with them when I was a little kid. I read the Agatha Christie books. That was like one of the things, like when my dad, when we would go on an out of town vacation, we would go to like some bookstore and he would always be, let's find the Agatha Christie because I was always reading Agatha Christie books. And, um, I was obsessed with like the Agatha Christie mystery books. Like, and this is probably more like sixth, seventh grade, but like I loved them. I was obsessed. I love the Agatha Christie books. And you know, looking back, I don't even remember which ones I've read. You know, like I knew, like I, I know that I've read some, um, but I haven't read all of them. But the movies that I loved were um, Evil Under the Sun. I loved that movie so much. I would watch it re repeatedly. I would watch it. And I also loved, um, what do you call it? Uh, Death on the Nile with Mia Farrow. And they were both such great movies. If you guys haven't seen it, Evil Under the Sun is about this hotel on um, this little island in the middle of the Mediterranean, I think. And all these people that come there and this murder occurs. And then um, Death on the Nile is about a boat that they're actually on. I haven't watched them in forever. I should watch them again. I loved those back in the day. There were so many movies, you know, that were such great movies. Dress to Kill um, was a great movie. Death Trap, do you guys remember that with Michael Caine? Michael Caine was in, uh, uh, was in, what was the one that I just said? Shoot. I don't remember. What, Dress to Kill, he was in Dress to Kill as well. With Angie Dickinson. Oh my God, that movie was so good. And then, oh, Blow, did you ever see Blow Up? Is it Blow Up or Blow Out? They actually did a remake of it, and it was not as good. But the original with, with John Travolta, he was a photographer, and he saw, like, a murder occur. That was really, really good. Um, there were so many movies that I loved like that back in the day. I used to, like, so, Clue with Jane Fonda. Um, my parents loved all those movies, so those were the movies that I watched, you know, when I was growing up as a kid. There was also this movie that was like a spoof on all of those uh, Agatha Christie movies or mystery movies, and it was called Murder by Death. Did you guys ever see it? Truman Capote was in it. And it had a lot of famous people. Peter Sellers was in it. I loved that movie so much, Murder by Death. It was such a great movie. And it's kind of scary, too. I mean, not really, because it's kind of a, a joke, but it's scary. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> the beginning of it. 
it is, I guess. Or I thought I was when I was a kid. It kind of, if you ever saw Clue, which I equally love Clue, I love anything that's kind of like a mystery like that. Um, if you ever saw Clue, Murder by Death kind of reminds me of Clue. So here's your assignment. You need to go see Murder by Death. You need to see Death on the Nile with Mia Farrow. You need to see Evil Under the Sun. And it is so good. This is literally like dipping your lips in honey. I mean, that is crack of dawn. <laughs> Cindy's moving on. Did you guys ever listen to the Jesus and Mary Chain? Oh my God, they were only one of my favorite bands in high school and I still love them. But they have a song called Just Like Honey and I love them. They also have a song called Taste of Cindy, which was one of my favorite songs in high school as well. That was it, I just sang a little bit of it to you. Um, if you've never heard the Jesus and Mary Chain, you should check them out. But anyway, um, so that's your assignment. You need to watch some of those movies. I keep a list on my phone of the movies that I want to go back and watch. One of my favorites, and actually they have it on YouTube, and so I go back in and I sometimes watch the beginning of it because it makes me, even though it's kind of, it's a it's a comedy, but it's still kind of scary. Not scary, but like these old 80s kind of like mystery movies, um, but it is Foul Play, and I, um, with, uh, what's her face? I can't think of her name. Kate Hudson's mom. Goldie Hawn. With Goldie Hawn and um, Chevy Chase. So good. It was so, so good. And um, I love that era of movies too. And then, it go, you know, going into like, so Foul Play, and then that turned into Seems Like Old Time. Seems like old times. <laughs> Not to be confused with when uh, Diane Keaton sings it in Annie Hall, but I do love that too. But anyway, um, it seems like old times. It's also Goldie Hawn and Chevy Chase. And Goldie Hawn is an attorney, and her husband, I think, is a judge. And Chevy Chase is her ex husband, and he's like a con artist. Like, he's just like, I don't know, but he's like hiding out in her garage. Okay, you know where, like, I had that battery that was underneath my chair, underneath my seat, that I, like, hurt my skin? Do you guys look at that thumb? Do you see that? I, like, ripped off an entire layer of skin right there. It hurt so bad. I do not believe that this is heat lightning, and I have a feeling that it is going to really downpour. And I'm just driving up here to get my Diet Coke, and then I'm ready to hit it the other way, and I'm going to listen to my audiobook. Okay, Lock Every Door by Riley Seiger. Really great thriller. I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with it. I don't know what is going on all of a sudden with me that it took me three weeks to six months to get through an audiobook, and now I'm literally just ripping through these books. <coughs> But I'm like two hours into this 10-hour book already. Um, maybe longer than that. Three hours, maybe. Um, and I'm loving it. If I literally had the audiobook playing at all times, like if I was at home and like when I'm doing stuff, having it play in the background, but I like to kind of enjoy the process and be like relaxed and like in the car listening to it. I don't like to just be like going, 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 but I could probably finish a book a day on, the, on Audible, in all honesty. In all honesty on Audible. <laughs> I think it's so funny that Audible gives these sponsorships to people that don't even read. And I am like such an advocate of Audible. Like I truly, truly believe in their service and they would never sponsor me in a million years, which is fine. I mean, I don't really care, but you know, it's like, because it's all like this numbers game. And so like, I listen to these podcasts all the time and they're like, Audible is a number one. I'm like, you do not read. Don't even act like you do. <laughs> Isn't that sad world that we live in? I just keep on shelling my money out to Audible. <laughs> I spend so much money on Audible. I really do. I mean, in reality, though, like, I don't... Because I haven't been buying as many books as I used to buy. I did buy uh, Void Moon by Michael Connolly because that's my August Supermarket Reads book. I did buy that um, this weekend, but I think I talked about that on here. Um, I have my change all counted out right here. Whew. 
Alex has, okay, so I was talking about getting my car washed while well, I showed it on here, right? And I was laughing, or he was laughing at me because she went in this wrong place too. I'm like, but he was laughing at me because I was like, yeah, I still have the coupons from my dad. And he was like, oh, have you thought about being, a, it's called an unlimited member or something. And I go, no. And he goes, well, you should think about getting it. And I go, okay. And um, I go, well, I have the coupons. And he goes, well, yeah, but if you're an unlimited member, I should drive over there and see how much it is. It's like $40 a month or $20 a month or I don't know how much it is. But you can actually wash your car as many times as you want to in a month. That's kind of the deal, isn't it? But the thing is, is that... Um, and like, I have to be honest, like the last couple times that I've driven by the car wash, it's been rather empty. Like it used to always be like super like packed. It's not anymore. It's been kind of empty. What I need to do is I need to have, I need my car detailed and vacuumed out, but I can do that. The rest of this car is spotless. Like I don't have anything in here. The only thing I have on the side of my car is, I have this scent bird thing in case I need some cologne. But I have a metal straw. We'll use the metal straw tonight. And then I have my a little plastic Starbucks cup. Over there doesn't have anything in it. I keep everything else in here and then in the back, I just have like this. I think it's a Madonna cup, yeah. Can I get a large Diet Coke, please? Anything else for you? Nope, that's it. One on nine, please. I have my gym bag. <laughs> and I have What's the Adidas sweatshirt? Oh, it's so cute. We got matching ones at Costco. Alex got one of them, I had to have one. And then I have this dish towel. And that's literally all I have in my car. Well, I have, do you see the lightning? It's just lightning again. I have the, uh, the patio chairs, the folding chairs are about like back, they fit over our shoulders. Those are the best deal, you guys. If you're gonna buy patio chairs or chairs, like folding chairs to take places, like to a park or whatever, or like fireworks, you should get those. You can hang them on the wall. Cause so I have all these hooks. I bought all these hooks for the garage that when I clean out the garage, then I'm gonna have these hooks on the wall and then we're gonna hang like the, it, it hasn't happened. I have lots of plans, you guys, okay? One of these days. So anyway, um, but, they're great, and I don't remember how much they were. I think they were like $20 at the end of summer or something, and we got them at Walmart or Meyer. I think we did, I can't remember. I feel like I trim, so I trim my nails constantly. I'm really weird about my nails, and I trim my nails all the time, but there always seems like there's one long one, and this one, like my thumbnail is like, it's not long, but it's like longer, and I'm like, I just trimmed my nails like literally like two days ago. Must be those Halo beauty pills. Not. <laughs> I took those things for three months. I don't think they did anything. Now, my husband did swear that he thought that they helped his hair and his nails grow. But I didn't notice any difference. That doesn't mean that they don't work. That just means that I didn't notice a difference in them. She is a sweetheart. I don't care what people say. I don't care if they hate her or not. She's always been very sweet, Toddy, to me. She's a very nice person. This poor woman literally works every day of the week. I would be so over it. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you. Seems like old times. I do you think these people are getting in front of me? Nuggets? Seems like old times having you. What's I gonna do? Do you think they'll come out with a veggie Big Mac? Okay, can I just tell you that? That would be an answer. 
because I love a Big Mac. I said that about the Whopper, and then the Whopper came out with a veggie Whopper. So you think that they're gonna come, they need to come out with a veggie Big Mac. I'm so confused though, like here's the thing, hold on a second, I'll tell you what I'm confused about. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, miss, I don't need this straw. Thank you. Thank you. See what a good citizen I am? She looked at me like I was crazy. She was like, you don't need the straw. No, I don't need the straw. I have McFrosty straw right here. Um, so, I get the review of the Impossible Whopper, right? Well, I got a lot of comments on my video from people saying, like I asked them to make it in the microwave, the burger, okay? And they're like, the reason that they took the mayonnaise and the cheese off of it was because it's vegan, because you asked for it. I, I guess maybe now I understand what people were saying. People were saying, because like I said, well, I ordered a veggie Whopper with cheese, and then I said, can you make the, I said, can you make it in a, a separate broiler or in the microwave? And they said, no, we can't do that. Or no, they said we can put it in the microwave. So, or whatever, I can't remember what they said. I said, can you do it in a separate broiler? And they said, no. And I said, okay, can you microwave it? And they did, because the girl asked me when I the first time I went around. But then people were saying, because they forgot to put my cheese on it, and they were saying that the reason that they didn't put my cheese, now I understand what people were saying. Peter, you're so stupid, you need to talk through it sometimes. They were saying the reason there was no mayonnaise originally, but there was mayonnaise on it. Oh, she asked me if I wanted mayonnaise. Now I understand why. Peter, you are so stupid. Okay, so I ordered it in the microwave. But then she said at the window, do you still want mayonnaise? It doesn't come with mayonnaise. And I said, well, of course I want mayonnaise on it. But then I got there, I, when I opened it, there was no cheese in it, right? Okay, just to clarify so people understand, people were saying to me, the way that you ordered it was vegan. So if you ordered it that way, they would take the cheese and the mayonnaise off because that would be vegan that way. Which I understand what people were saying. That makes sense to me now. I didn't understand what people were saying before. I was like, what are people not understanding? But this is the thing, whether you're vegan or not, okay, that should have nothing to do with asking for the burger to actually be cooked in a different broiler. Because when I read the article, it wasn't talking about veganism versus vegetarianism. It was talking about vegan and vegetarianism versus the the burger being cooked. And that if it was cooked in the same broiler as chicken nuggets or whatever, there would be cross-contamination. Well, I'm not vegan, I'm a vegetarian. So I can eat cheese on my burger and I can have mayonnaise on my burger. Excuse me, but I don't want it cooked in the same place as chicken or meat unless, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that there are things that have, that happens when I go to other restaurants. I can't be perfect about that and stuff like that. I get it. But that's why I was asking. I wasn't asking. So they must have misunderstood when I asked because they were, like, assuming that I was vegan. But she also said that there are some people that are strict vegetarians. Maybe that's what she said. I don't know. There was a lot lost in translation, apparently, in that very simple review video. But I will tell you one thing for damn sure, okay? That Impossible Whopper, Whopper is fantastic. It just is. It is so good. They're now apparently saying all this stuff that, I don't know, Sarah was telling me that it's not really that healthy for you and it's not really as super vegetarian as people say it is and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. It's good though. My husband cooks up these salads. It's about the only thing that he cooks. The only thing I cook is pasta. So, or I make a big lasagna. Frozen. <laughs> every fall I'll buy like, every couple weeks I buy a, like a big lasagna. I don't, like, I, now I don't eat it, because it's like, I don't, you know, I'll get him a meat lasagna, and then I'll cook it up. He gets so excited. I'll get, like, um, Texas toast, and I'll get, like, a little small, like, veggie lasagna for myself or something, and then I'll cook it up, and, you know, it's like one of those big family size ones, and so he'll come home, and he'll be like, did you cook? And I'm like, yeah, I made you a lasagna tonight. It's usually, like, one of those Stouffer's ones, or, you know, the Marie Calendar ones, or whatever. He loves those family size ones, but then... He can take it every day to work. And so like we have all these Tupperware containers and he'll put like the lasagna in the bottom with like a piece of bread on top. Isn't that so cute? And then he takes his lunch to work and he does the same thing with chili. And like I'll help him make like the chili ones because 
Even though I burnt chili one time. I don't know how you burn chili, but I did. People ask me to cook all the They're like, you should cook, you should cook. I'm like, this is the problem. I burn chili. How do you burn chili? Okay. But I did. I burn chili. And so I make a huge pot of chili every year. And then we, like not every year, but like I usually do it a couple times during the fall and winter. I love chili like nobody's business. And then I make macaroni, like you know the elbow macaroni and goes in there and then I get sour cream um, and then I get uh, or oyster crackers because Alex loves the oyster crackers, the little round ones. And then cheese, you gotta have the yellow cheese on there and all the stuff, right? So I get all that and then when he's done, like we sit there at the counter and like we scoop in the chili and then we put all the stuff on the top of it and um, then we like bag up a little baggie of like oyster crackers and then it's a perfect lunch for him because it's like a chili that's like that size, you know? And so when we were going through, um, so like I don't typically eat a lot throughout the day. Like Alex does. Alex is somebody that eats three meals a day. Like he eats breakfast. He'll eat like, he usually gets an iced tea for, or a latte. He now has been drinking lattes like the last year. He used to hate coffee. Now, but now like when we go to Patashoe, he gets a cup of coffee. It's so weird to me. He used to hate coffee. So when um, he, he'll get like a cup of coffee or an iced tea in the morning from Starbucks on the way to work. And then he'll have like some kind of bar. Oh, come on camera. He'll have like an Optavia bar or he'll get like protein bars and things like that. It'll go back in in a second, you guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what the problem is. Um, but he'll have like an Optavia bar or a protein bar or something like that, you know? Or maybe it won't. There it goes. And then he... Oh, I don't know why it is doing this recently. And then he'll eat a pretty big lunch. Like, he goes and gets, like, a huge salad from Kroger. Um, or he'll get, like, chicken strips from Kroger. He goes to deli. He loves the deli at Kroger. Or he'll get um, uh, Chipotle. He'll get a huge burrito from Chipotle. He loves Chipotle. You know, or stuff like that. I used to, when we first started dating, like, the first year... I would, um, so we were like a one car family and I would take him to work and then I went to Einstein bagels and they had these bagel pizzas that he loved and I would like drop him off at work and then I would come back and I would surprise him with bag bagel pizzas. I also used to send him flowers a lot at work. I should do that this week and surprise him. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. I haven't sent him flowers in a long time. Those are like the things that you forget, like when you've been together for a long time, you know? You don't send me flowers. I'm gonna go tomorrow to the florist, don't tell anybody, and I'm gonna order him flowers and just put a little note that I'm excited about our sexy little trip to Vegas. Okay, it's gonna stop, hold on. My husband is so easy to buy flowers for. Now, for me, I love Stargazer Lilies. Stargazer Lilies are my favorite flowers in the entire world. I think they smell delicious. Or those like white palms. Oh my God, I love those. I just have those in vases all over the house. But Alex loves anything tropical. So you can get like the birds of paradise and stuff. So you can go in there and you can like, just be like, I want a tropical little mix. And they can put it together, you know, for like 40 bucks or whatever. Um, so what was I going to say? So yeah, so like when we were, we started like the lasagna and like the chili thing. And I wasn't a vegetarian then. So we would start, I don't eat breakfast and I don't eat lunch. I usually just eat dinner, which... You guys want to know how, like, the people are like, well, then how do you gain so much weight? Well, because I graze, because we always have crap around the house, which we don't have as much now. Or I go to the gas station, or I go to Taco Bell late at night, or I go to McDonald's. I went to all these fast food places back in the day, and I would literally sit in my car and eat. I love to sit in my car and eat. Oh, my God, it's so bad. But I do. I would go and I would get uh, chips and cheese from the gas station and candy bars and I would just sit here and I would like so I'd have my phone like right here like parked in the parking lot of the gas station and I would watch something like say yes to the dress on Netflix or something or you know drag showdown on uh, YouTube okay uh, <laughs> Crystal Ball Diva who hosts drag showdown she hasn't put up an episode in like six months can we get an episode up there I'm like wondering who's gonna win this damn thing we're down to like the final four so anyway do you guys even know what I'm talking about drag showdown is like RuPaul's drag race but it's like this underground drag uh, there's all these underground drag races on YouTube did you not know it so I did a video about this back in the day and um, it's fantastic. I love watching it. A lot of them, you know, uh, like are younger. But so Crystal Ball Diva is, a, I consider a friend. I consider Crystal a friend. She's really nice. But anyway, um, 
she put this show together called Drag Showdown. I think it's like the fourth or fifth season. And, um, but everybody has to mail in their entries. It's from all over the country. And then they put it together in this little show. I love watching it. But anyway, so I would sit there and eat. Like, that's how I'm, like, such a foodie. Like, I'm such a food addict and just eat horrible food. So, but, like, when we were, like, getting rid of debt and we were, like, trying to get, like, debt-free, you know, which... That was the greatest gift we ever gave to each other. Um, you know, that was like some of the things that we used to, like, that was one of the tricks that we used to do was that, and I don't know where we heard that one actually, because that was not an original idea, but I did hear that. Not the chili, but the lasagna. I used, to, I, I read some article and it was about like, like, like a couple of two and how they reduced their spending and whatever and like one of the things they said was like buy a family sized meal and then turn it into lunches for the rest of the week and I was like this is a really great idea and Alex didn't mind he'd eat lasagna every single day you know my husband is a leftover king he loves leftovers whenever we go out to eat if he doesn't eat everything. Okay, we will like go out to be, this is a true story. So we'll go like to Basbo's Pizza and I'll get like a Popeye sandwich, which is spinach and cream cheese on a big baguette. And I'll get like a little side salad. He'll get a side salad and a large cheese pizza. <laughs> a large cheese pizza, okay? And then he'll eat four or five pieces and then he'll take the whole, the rest of the pizza to work the next day. Or like, but like in a little container. Or he'll like sit there, if it's like a Sunday, he'll like eat that like when he gets up. Because of course he has to eat, you know, lunch. And we don't go and eat somewhere till later. But back in the day, those were things that we would do. You know, like we would like have family sized meals. We would buy them because you know, you can buy one of those like family sized lasagnas for like, do you see this lightning everywhere? You can buy them for like 10 bucks, right? And then you buy the family sized lasagna for let's say 10 bucks and um, that's lunches for a week. I mean, that's super cheap, you know? And it's little ways that you save money like that. Like that Walmart thing too, like, you know, when we would want to, because we did a lot of movie nights and we would, you know, like if we would go to Walmart or to the Red Box, and like, you know, the Red Box was like a dollar a movie, I think, right? So you got two movies for $2. Now, I mean, you got all these streaming services and stuff, but we get two movies for $2, right? And then we would go to Walmart and we would each get like a bucket of popcorn, okay? Well, that was like two bucks each, that's $4. And then we would each get like those large candy bars or Alex would get like, he loves Sour Patch Kids and stuff like that. So you're talking about $10, $12 total for everything for an entire night. When for us to go to a movie, it's literally like, you know, like, $30, $40 for the tickets. And then once you get a drink there, once you get popcorn and everything, once you go out to dinner, if you go out to dinner first, so like Apple, even if you just go to Applebee's, you know, or whatever, it's really expensive. And, you know, I look at that sometimes like, like sometimes I'll sit there and I'll be like, like on a Sunday, we used to go to like, uh, some place for brunch. It wasn't necessarily always Padishu. That just started the last couple years. But we would go to brunch somewhere, like Denny's. And then we would eat, like, um, a dinner. And then we would go to a movie later. And I'm thinking, we just dropped, like, over $100 on a Sunday, right? But... I'm like, well, you know, it's early in our relationship, and we, it's only on a Sunday. But then we would go out on the weekends, and, um, you know, we would, like drinks and things like that and so we were collectively spending a lot of money at first and that was when we had to start calling and pulling in the reins and the thing is is that 11 years ago stuff was cheaper than it is now I just think, I don't know how some people get by. I just really don't. Like, there have been points in my life where, and I don't know, you know, the less I have, the less I need it. It's always been kind of like that for me. You know, like, 
I can remember back in the day. I just, I didn't, I'm laughing because I'm remembering this one story where my old roommate, she realized that she had a box of shells and cheese in her car and we about both went crazy because we were so excited to have some macaroni and cheese. But you know, like the less I've needed in my life at times, or at, at times that I needed, the less I had, the less I needed. You know what I mean? And it's really taught me the difference between what I want and what I need. And it's not to say that there aren't nice things that I want. It's not to say that I wouldn't want a Gucci backpack like I was talking on here recently about, you know? But I don't have the need to do that. I wouldn't also, I wouldn't begrudge myself from doing it if I had the money to spend on it. It was something that I really thought about and I, and I wanted. Um... I would do it. I would allow myself to have that today and I wouldn't feel bad about it. I would enjoy it, you know? And I think that's the thing. You know, it's like one of the things that I love to do is stay in nice hotels. I love to travel. And um, I'm not going to begrudge myself that or feel bad about it. And I don't think that anybody else should, you know? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, I have friends of mine that have beautiful purses, you know? Beautiful homes, beautiful cars. And that that is all very nice and intriguing to me. I just don't want to become obsessed. I don't want to feel like I need to have that, you know? Um... Because I've seen it ruin a lot of people that they they have to have these things that 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 makes them happy and it, it just it doesn't like that just doesn't make you happy you know and um, I mean I've had some very very nice things in my life and they didn't make me happy you know I don't know I think a lot of that is a facade for happiness. Sometimes the saddest people are the ones that have a lot of showy stuff around them, you know? And, um... And sometimes not. And sometimes not. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know a lot of people that have a lot of showy things that are just very happy, amazing people and really enjoy their life. So, I don't think it has to mean that either. I think it's personally whatever that means to you, but... I do think that my poorest parts of my life is when I've learned the most. Did you see that lightning? I think it's when I learned the most, you know. Anyway, I'm going to get off here and listen to a little bit of my audio book. I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday, unless you have other plans. And um, tomorrow night is my meeting night. I'll be going with Tanya Jean. And then I may be hanging out with my friend afterwards, so I may try to vlog throughout the day tomorrow. I don't know what he's doing tomorrow night. But anyway, um... So, I hope you guys are having an amazing Tuesday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, do not have other plans. Enjoy your Tuesday. Make the most of it. Do something you've never done before. Start a new book. Download a song you've never listened to before. Go and spend $5 on something you don't need. Which kind of goes against everything I just said. But whatever. Do something fun today. Do something different. Ben start binge watching a new show. Um, if you've watched Euphoria, let me know in the comment section below. My husband said he wants to watch that next. And I've never heard anything about it. But all these people are talking about I've never heard what it's about. But all these people are talking about it. So let me know if I should watch Euphoria. Um, and if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day when you're getting ready. And you say, I love you. I care about you. You're worth good things. And be confident in how you feel about yourself. And most importantly, pass it on to somebody else. Tell somebody today. Have you? If you're watching this and it's at the end of the day, did you tell somebody today how much they meant to you? Well, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I care about you. And there I did my, <laughs> I did my job for the day. Look at all that crazy lightning. Anyway, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.